Hello everyone, this is Clay with Digifactors Animation. I hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas. I know I did. Uh, it was lovely. Well, with that said, now it's time to get back to a, a tutorial. So, what you see here is a set that I put together using uh, low poly pine trees and uh, some backdrops of pine trees and a backdrop of a mountain and some hilltops. So it, it, from a bird's eye view, it doesn't look that great, you know, from this angle. And if you just kind of like, you know, swing from over here, it doesn't still, it still doesn't look that much at all. Uh, but, you know, that's just because of where we're at. But if we go in closer and go inside of it, and you can see all of a sudden everything blends in. This makes a wonderful set. Of course, I am not finished with it yet because I still got to put some tree, uh, make some backdrops of tree lines in the background behind these trees to make it look like there's an actual forest in the back. So I, I haven't done that yet, but I will. And this scene is going to be the starting scene from where part one of my Camping with Bigfoot left off. So this is going to be the starting scene. Okay. Now, you can see the landscape is a little different. That's because I made, uh, I made some landscape meshes in uh, Blender and kind of like added some textures to it and then strings of grass. Okay, and then I and I slapped it inside a movie suit. And then I took the, I took the uh, the ground of the environment and I kind of like matched the uh, you know the color of my uh, hills here. And then I made some uh, low poly pine trees. I made a group of them and and I stuck them in there as well. Yeah, and this right here is a uh, a backdrop with some hills in it, hills and uh, to trees, stuff like that. All right, so if I, if I look, if I go back a little further, and you can see that all kind kind of blends in. It makes it look like it's the whole the whole scenery is there. It just makes it like the world. Okay, um, then if I pan around to the back here, as you can see, I made some more hilltops here, mountains, uh, and I had a little river in front of it. And this is a backdrop as well. Okay, now once you, when you do stuff like this and you, you add your message, you make your meshes to make your environment, especially an environment like this, you, you want to have an open, a big open, you know, world. I mean, you just can't have one little area. Um, I mean, if you can, you can have one little area if that's all you're focusing on. But basically, I am focusing it, but I want it to be bigger. I want it, whenever I'm filming, I want it, I want the environment to be bigger. And so this is the way I did it, because I, I, I knew I had to have mountains and uh, trees and hills and stuff like that with water. So so this was the idea I came up with. Um, like I said, whenever you use backdrops in, in uh, your environments that you create, it uses less, it uses less uh, memory on your computer and it doesn't take up a whole lot of uh, storage space or anything like that or and it and it doesn't make the uh, uh, software move slow like that because it's just it's just a picture slapped onto a backdrop okay but yeah uh, we're not finished with this yet and I'm going to show you a few things okay um, first off and you notice that everything here is in cartoon style i made it all cartoony i made the trees cartoony the pine trees cartoony now whenever you're creating a set 
an, uh, set for a scene for one of your cartoons, you kind of want to make everything match. You just don't want to mix reality into cartoon and stuff like that. And I have slapped uh, an example in here. And hopefully you already know what it is. You already spotted the thing that doesn't really belong into a cartoon world. Okay. And when you mix cartoon and uh, something that looks more realistic into an, um, one environment, it, it just sets it off bad. And you don't want that, you know. Um, it just throws everything off is what I meant to say. It throws everything off. So what is it that we need to change? There is something here that looks realistic than the other things. It's a tree. It's the tree on the left. It's this tree right here. Now, I slapped this in here to show you what I'm talking about. So, this is a realistic looking tree. And I have a cartoony, a cartoony background that I created. Okay. So, with that said, this tree doesn't really belong into a cartoon world. Unless we're making a realistic looking environment. So we're not doing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete that tree. Okay? So we got that tree deleted. And we're going to replace it with another tree. And we'll use a tree that I already got. And we'll just like copy this pine tree. And we'll paste that pine tree right over here. Okay? Now, like I said a long time ago, whenever we're building a set so and, and you can't and say you see how this this tree just stops in midair I can't get it nowhere because of the friction in between both meshes the mesh of the ground that I've created and the mesh of the tree there's friction in between those and that keeps it from touching each other now like I said before we want to create a little area in our timeline to put everything together to put our environment together okay so I'm gonna open up the timeline and you can see right here okay with everything else I have a keyframe right at the beginning of it all right and then once I uh, get all my keyframes into place I kind of want to stretch that timeline out right here like that Okay, and I want to grab the other end of it. And I want to make a space, an empty space, right there. So this right here will be what I call our safe zone, our building zone. And this over here inside the pinkish uh, timeline will be our animating zone. So anytime we're animating and moving things around we won't be touching things over here we would only be touching things over here and this will basically be uh, maybe the boat if I want to move the boat you know so we'd move the boat we and, and I know the boat already has a keyframe right at the beginning that's okay. All we have to do is just add another keyframe and then another keyframe and another keyframe and we can use those to animate that boat without messing with anything else because we have created that safe zone. All right. Now, we're going to move that back. Okay. And we're going to click on that tree. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to prepare movement. And then I'm going to put it in keyframe. Switch back to direct and then add that keyframe right at the beginning. And we're going to push that tree down. Now you notice the friction was turned off between both mesh meshes. That's what we need. And this is the best way to put your... Like I said before, this is the best way to put your uh, sets together without anything bouncing off each other or pushing away from each other. And then once we get that tree into place, we want to lock it. Always lock everything after you put it in keyframe mode and put it in uh, into position. Okay. 
Now, we could add a few more trees if we want. But I'm just going to leave this alone right now like it is. And then once you do uh, add your your meshes and your keyframes and put everything into place and then lock it, it's always best to save it. Because you never know when Mugazoo will crash. And that happens to me a lot. Well, not since I got this new, this, this new computer. So uh, everything's been running smoothly and fast. Okay. Now, once we put our meshes in, and you can see that here, wherever our meshes, if you made a mesh that doesn't go all the way and connect to, to itself, like from one end to the other, uh, me, I added a little bit of water. I made a flat plane, a round flat plane, and I added it in, and I pushed it right into there, and kind of like uh, into the ground a little bit. I'm giving an illusion that this lake is coming into this pond, or this pond going into it, whatever, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So, what I like to do is maybe I can add some rocks right here like I did there. Add some rocks, or you can add a tree, or maybe even a log or something land over here, a dead tree land over here. Uh, whatever you feel like you need, you know. So, we kind of want to keep that open because this is an open area where people can go ride their boats in and uh, go fishing or just park the boat on the bank and fish off the, the shore there, you know, and that. But now that we've got the half, the half uh, part of the, uh, or the first part of camping with Bigfoot done, and you know, they were riding in that boat going down the lake, and there was tree, there was a tree line on either side. Now, even though this is a plane, we can still make this plane look more, uh, uh, make it look more there, more um, cartoony, and make it to where it actually uh, blends into the uh, um, the background more. And the way we can do that is we need trees. Okay. So well, you're probably saying, how can we add trees to the backdrop? knowing that we don't have any trees drawn into the texture. Well, I mean, I'm going to show you a trick. So I'll grab, let's see, I'm going to click on this tree here, and this is a group of trees. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that group of trees, all right, and then I'm going to paste it right into our scene. Whoops, what happened? Oh, uh, there they are. And I can't, let me uh, redo that. Let me delete those. It happens sometimes. I'm pretty sure you ran into it. So we'll copy those and then uh, let me back up a little bit. I will paste. Still doing it. Okay, well, they're right here. I should be able to grab them. Yeah. So I'm just going to kind of uh, straighten them up a little bit. Uh, since they were in, uh, the original copy was in... Uh, keyframe mode this uh, this happens I mean but you can just right click go to edit and then go to physics and could keep upright and that will keep them straight okay so what we're going to do is we're going to add those trees into the shoreline right here that later will excuse me we make it look like we got trees on the other side so I'm going to kind of like scale those down a little bit, and we'll bring them over. I'm going to kind of push it where it's touching the uh, backdrop. So they're still a little bit too big. We're going to just kind of like shrink it down a little bit. You don't want them too small now. I'll we'll bring it up where it makes it look like those trees are in the grass on that other side. There. I mean, so it's part of it. So you kind of like. However, how you're going to have your uh, your camera angles, you just kind of want to bring your trees down a little bit, maybe, uh, let's see. We, you can adjust the angles. Just put it in uh, key, uh, keyframe mode and movement. Add that keyframe. I'm just kind of like, do it like this. Wherever the angle works best. It's about like that. Okay, 
you just remember, I know it looks like it's going to float around. And your camera's, as long as you got your camera to where it thinks it's seeing trees. Let me go right here, see right here. That looks like trees on the other side, don't it? So it gives the illusion that those trees are growing over there on the other side of the lake. So let's add some more trees. We'll copy those since we shrunk them down. We don't have to do it again when we paste them more. We'll paste those right in there. And again, it does its little thing with the uh, friction. So uh, let's shrink those down a little bit. I, I guess I thought I co I didn't copy the... I thought I did. So we just kind of want to match the other... The other uh, size of the trees the trees like that now some of them can be bigger like that okay and then let's copy oh, we're going to lock those make sure you lock those now now a lot of times when you do this you don't have to put it in keyframe mode but if it, it doesn't act right on you then put it in keyframe mode and i'm gonna lock this one too so i'm going to copy those and let's Paste them. Huh. Okay, so get those, and we're going to put them. Let me straighten it up a little bit. Let's close these out. Uh, add them. And go to physics. Keep up, right? Okay. Now we have collisions between uh, these trees and this tree, and a collision with the uh, backdrop itself. So we're just going to put those into animation mode or keyframe mode, if you will. And we'll add our keyframe. All right, so now let's move those trees into place. Just go right behind it. Now, don't worry about if some of the trees go into the background, into the uh, um, backdrop. You just make it Fix it to where it doesn't look that bad, where the tree doesn't go all the way. You just don't want, uh, you just don't want to see the uh, mountain bleeding into the tree. So you just fix it to where it looks right. Okay. Now, if we open up our camera view window, and voila. See, that looks like there's trees on the other side. Okay. So we adding uh, props in front of the backdrop like that in animation mode or if, wherever, if, wherever it's way it works. And even though if we go close to it, it doesn't look that way. And everything is in lock into place. So if you, well, except for that one, we'll lock that. So everything looks weird like this, right? But if we back up, and we kind of like get into our angle for our camera. We set our camera into the right angle and it doesn't look that way. And this is basically how I do a lot of my sceneries. I use backdrops to make my sceneries look bigger and I add props in front of my sceneries even though they're floating in the air which your camera thinks it's not and it makes you think it's part of the scenery. So that is the tricks that I use, and I hope you find this useful, and you can use these tricks as well. Okay, uh, that's pretty much it. I just want to show you this, and this is a quick tutorial on how I create my sceneries using backdrops along with my meshes that I make, and putting props in front of the uh, backdrops to simulate trees on the other side. Well, that's it. And um, again, I hope everyone had a nice Christmas and hopefully you will have a very happy new year and a safe one at that. Until next time, keep an eye on my channel and God bless.